Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. Got one on. Got him off? Ah, oh, he just missed it. He just, he just spit it out. Got another one on. Got him off. That one up. Atlantic Bonita fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat it. It's that time of year, isn't it? We're sitting down here off the New River Inlet. See the sun over there just come up in the horizon. Beautiful morning, absolutely gorgeous. We got about a southwest, somewhere around about five mile an hour southwest wind. That's all they're calling for today. Might, might pick up a 10 in the afternoon. But this is an early morning bite most of the time. Yeah, first couple hours of day break. <laughs> These boys are strong. Yeah, they are. Not only that, but they're good eating. That's the difference between it. We target those albacore. Our albacore usually show up first and like sometime in March and last through the month of April. And, and the bonita usually start, show up in April and last through early May. But uh, these are really good eating. We, act, we usually have about a three week to one month window of opportunity. Fun fish to catch. Yeah, like I say, unlike albacore, when you get him in, you have some fine fish on the grill. Steering, just like you would yellowfin tuna. They don't give up, do they? No. <laughs> they just keep going. They got stripes down the side of their body versus those albacore have blotches, like a blotchy pattern down the side of their body. Also, those teeth might show them that. <laughs> yeah, they got some. Their teeth look like King Merkel teeth. Let's about lift this one in the boat. Yeah, big difference. Fun to catch. Just using standard trout, trout gear. That's it. Sweet stuff. Excellent. Awesome. Got some for the grill. Now let's have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> On that first one, I was using that DOA, like a finesse. But you have your gotcha trout killer and your Zoom super flukes. They all work good. That's a tsunami, but we use sting silvers, uh, Maria jigs, crippled herring. Anything about you know, like I said, an inch to three inches long. And a, Half ounce or so to an ounce. Diamond jig. Diamond know. jigs work good. You They're control all... for them too. Yeah, definitely. You definitely put out the Yozuri's. Uh, Clark spoons on planers. We personally, we, we like to pull Yozuri's because we, uh, it's more hands on with the fish and you don't have to hand line them into the boat. You can fight them all the way up to the boat and it works well in these little trout outfits. That's it. We've got uh, a lot of times. If you, if you get out a little bit late and the, and the surface bites shut down, the fish are still around the structure where they fish in a live bottom or an artificial reef. So a lot of times if that's the case, then you can start deep jigging uh, or pull the usuries like Mike's talking about. They're breaking good right over here, about 150 yards. Yep. Go ahead and take us over there, Jeff. All right. That's what you look for. You just look for them breaking or look for birds working. And they're not always going to be on the structure. These fish are scattered for two and a half miles here, just everywhere. 30, 40 feet past it. Three, two, one, come on, eat that bait. Got them all. Mm. Could barely reach it. <laughs> about 30 yards past there he is. it. Doubled up. <laughs> Double <Sweet>. up. <laughs> That's the difference right there, folks, with this jig that Jeff's using, this uh, soft plastic I'm using, I can't cast about half his, his distance. And he's got a half ounce, you know, half ounce jig head on there. Of course, this is probably a, a full ounce, this uh, this particular jig I put on here, so. Another thing, with these fish, be prepared to run. <laughs> <laughs> and if your line goes slack, reel as fast as you can, because you haven't lost him, he's just running at you. They'll do that a lot of times. As soon as you hook them up, they'll run right towards the boat. There we go. It's a beautiful fish. They look like twins. <laughs> Man, they're fun to catch. I've been waiting for this all spring long. It's amazing. If you're not sure, you know, you want a starting point, you know, head to your artificial reefs within, you know, two, three, four miles of the beach and uh, any near shore marked live bottoms. We have them breaking all in front of us here. Get ready, Jeff, for put him up quick. Come on, boys. 
breakfast is served. Got him on. Fish on! Doesn't even know he's hooked yet. He's getting ready to find out, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's getting ready to take off. Turn the supercharger on. This fish just doesn't want to run. Must be how I have him hooked or something. He's going to be that way almost. Get him in the boat. Have a big difference between him and a six, seven pounder. This fish here go about, I don't know, two and a half pounds. It looks real good on my grill tonight. Oh, I have one right behind him. See him roll on? Yeah. Oh, right there. Oh, oh sweet. <laughs> nice hit there. That now. was nice. <laughs> Crashed it, didn't he? Yeah, I was about to pull mine out of the water, and Mike was almost to the boat with his, and had one roll on his bait, so I kept skipping mine there. He just came up and crushed it. <laughs> Take me to the back. We're just lucky around here, that's all I can tell you. This area of North Carolina, the coast of North Carolina. We start off the season with those, those albacore blitzing everywhere and moves into our bonita. And then on the back side of our bonita comes in our, our Spanish and Kings. Don't forget flounder now, don't forget flounder. Our flounder already here. We don't want to really talk about that right this minute, do we, Mike? <laughs> Since Mike's been worrying about the last couple days, picking up between 20 and 40 a trip in about six hours within 10 miles of the beach. See my rod handles. That's, some, <laughs> that's tennis racket grip. That helps with the slime. Uh, you, you have no slippage with that slime. Real comfortable. I've been wrapping my grips with tennis racket. Pretty nice fish. It's a decent one there. I think you got a big one there. Bigger I one. don't know. A couple of casts ago, I lost my my nice jig, <laughs> uh, my metal jig. But I've, I actually put on a, I mean, uh, a jig head like Mike had on, a little chartreuse jig head, about a half ounce. And uh, I had just a clear um, a clear Zim Super Fluke on there. All right, guys. We are going to switch up and put the Yozuri's out. We're going to troll around. We've been running around from school to school the past 30 minutes and uh, and they're just getting so spooky. The sun's getting up. You can see how high it is. It's probably, I don't know, about 8 o'clock this morning. And that's what these Bonita do. They, they, it's a real early bite. They'll stay up on top and they'll stay up where you can get to them and, and catch them. We use a little 4-inch Yuzuri. Um, these are deep divers. This, see the good lip on the front of it. This will dive down, you know, 8 or 10, 15 feet, depending on how much line you let out. Big thing is, right in this area, like Mike's talking about, there's fish all over. We're seeing one pop here and there now, but they're not staying organized. So they're, they're down 5, 10, 15 feet in the water column, and every now and then a couple pop here and there. So we're going to get into a general area where we're seeing birds, or we're still seeing a fish occasionally hop up, and, uh, and we'll put these out and troll them, and, and hopefully continue some action this morning. We got a sea bass, dude. You digging bottom? <laughs> sea bass are thick there, is all I got to say. <laughs> They're probably suspended off the bottom. All right, here's the, here's the first. Tautog? <laughs> Triggerfish down in Mexico, huh? That's a sea bass. Is that sea bass up in the water? Yeah, we're digging a little deep here. <laughs> now that was a school it, sea bass. Sea bass, you're not say. lying, yeah. Because <laughs> our baits are only you know, maybe 15 feet down. So, uh, <laughs> these sea bass are sitting 15, 20 feet off the bottom. I can tell you one thing. I want to turn around and get that number. Yeah, you're not lying. <laughs> we just went over a ledge for them sea bass to be stacked up that high. You don't see this too often. <laughs> We've got baits diving 10, 15 feet down, hooking sea bass up in 40, 45 foot of water. It's that time of morning the Bonita pushed back down. Definitely, if you're going to target Bonita, you better be prepared to run a little bit in the dark if you can. If you can safely do it, we did. That's not a problem. Uh, you got to get out of here early. When the sun's coming up, that's the best time. Let's go catch some flounder, boys. We're going to run back up the beach a little ways, get on some live bottom, hopefully get some flounder. Huh? That's it. It's usually this time of year, mix your flounder and sea bass around. So take advantage of it. Who'd want to spend a, uh, a tank of gas to come out here to fish for an hour and a half? and uh, and have to go back to the dock early. I know I'm not gonna. <laughs> Look, cigar minnows. <laughs> cigar minnows, check that out. 
I look, I was about 10 feet off the bottom getting bumps like crazy. I jerked on it and uh, there's some pretty cigar minnows down there right now. It's a keeper. Sea bass have to be 12 inches. 15 per person. A sea bass. Close. This is a decent one. I know I'm not getting that many big hits like you are. I'm getting these little nips. Kind of holding it still on the bottom. That's a decent one too. A little bit of a knot head there. Mm, that's a pretty one there. Come on, share it, Mike. Share it. Say <laughs> something for me, man. Oh. Mike has got a flatfish on here, folks. I don't know what it is. I don't Look know. At his head. He's acting funny. I don't know, that's something else, Snag. We might have something, uh, oh, you got a tall tog on there, maybe? I don't know. It's a you flounder, know, buddy. That's a nice flounder. flounder. and you net on him? He's just not quivering. It's a nice one. Oh, look at him right there. Oh, Good that's a nice God, three or four, four pounder. That's a four pounder right look there. Look at him. God. He had a, uh, live cigar on her. Why <laughs> <laughs> are you cheating on me? I snagged that live cigar on her. I turned around and put him back on the hook just to see if a big flounder would hit it. Imagine. Look at that. Oh, yeah. He's not as big as the one I lost. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. He'll go three pounds. Oh, yeah. We have been here probably about five, ten minutes. Maybe. This is all about switching it up. That's all it's about. We had we actually started off. We had a really good morning on the Bonita. It's just a short-lived bite, you know, a couple hours at the most. We had about an hour and a half good bite. Caught probably eight or ten nice Bonita, and the bite ended. So you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go home. Or you're going to do something else. So this time of year, as we're going through late April and May, and the flounders are starting to come near shore, and anywhere within ten miles of the beach, it's possible to get on them. So you just search these ledges until you find them. I think you had a bump on your jig. It looked like a flounder. Look at him. You got a bump on that jig. Give him some slack. Some reason these albacore are not taken. I don't know what they're. Well, there's not a lot of bait really right on top. That bait's down deep. Mike's got a flounder on there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I think this could be a sea bass. I don't know. That's a quiver there. Yeah. Probably a small flounder. Small flounder, I believe. Yeah, small flounder. If he put that one in the rod holder to take a toss at, with his other rod at those <laughs> albacore. When he did, there was a little bump to it. Yeah, you see. Just the rocking on the boat sideways, uh, side to side, was jigging his bait for him. Another small one. Where'd you catch him? Right here? He <laughs> <laughs> hit the bottom and he thumped it. I mean, no sooner to hit the bottom, he might keep. Look at that. He just yep. threw up a cigar in right yep, there. Yep, that's exactly what he threw up. Don't try to, don't try to take that cigar in <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. You see them flying are fired up feeding right now. You see the the size there, them two baits. That's incredible. He threw up a live cigar minute. He yeah. just They're eat eating that. hard right now. You see that action of that rod? We're just we're just popping that six inches to a foot. There it is. Jeff got him. Decent fish there, Jeff. You want to keep a lot of pressure because they'll lock their jaws. And when they get up about 10 feet, they'll open their jaws up and what we call a quiver. They're actually just shaking their mouth wide open. And a lot of times that's when you actually hook the fish. It's another nice one, probably he'll probably go almost three pounds. There you go. Pretty fish, huh? Right? He nailed it. When he come up, I pulled him up two feet off the bottom, he done that shaking, and that's when I hooked him. That's number seven, folks. We've been here at the most 15 minutes, right, Jeff? Yeah, it's not a, if you get on them, it's a quick thing. I know a lot of folks think that, you think uh, all day long fishing for just a few flounders. And sometimes it's like that in the backwaters, but if you find them out here in the ocean, it's, it's like getting on a knot of sea bass or anything else. He was, They're schooled up. He was 15 and a quarter. And they'll be from about, you know, three quarters of a pound a pound up to about six or seven pounds, the biggest ones. One thing you don't want to do is overcrank these things too fast to the top. That's right. You want them coming up nice and flat, just kind of doing circles down there, and they'll quiver real slow every now and then. 
pretty You bring them up too fast, it feels like it's pretty good. When you bring them up too fast, you'll turn them straight up and then open that mouth. Their mouth is massive and they'll go into those convulsions, that quick shaking. Oh yeah, pretty flounder. That's a three pounder there. Look where he you spit, spit up. something up. Is that a croaker or something? Or a hogfish? That's a hogfish. There he is, that's him. Get him on? Mm -hmm. Got him on. Small fish. But it's a flounder. You just keep casting those little ones. I'll cast the big ones today. <laughs> oh yeah, there he is on the ledge. Oh, got, got one on. Him. Mike just backed up and said the cigar minnows were solid under us. So by that time, I laid back into something here. It feels like a flounder. If he is, he's not a big one like this last year we had. Flounder. Close. I think he's legal. Oh, he'll you make gotta make sure when you lay these things down, close their jaw. He's 15 and a half, that one there. Yep. That's called dinner. There he is. You got him there, isn't he? Yep. There he is. He come back that was that telltale thump. Love that shake of that head, don't you? It feels good, doesn't it? Hey. Well, folks, we've been here uh, about a half hour. About a half hour. That's number what, eleven? I think ten or eleven, <laughs> and lost a couple. Mike lost one nice one. Yeah. It's uh, eleven o'clock. That's it. It's still early. That was an awesome day. We're going back out fishing. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to put the smaller boat in the water, and we're going red fishing, aren't we? That's it. That's it. Yeah, For this sure. is uh, these Bonita again. You know, sometime in early to mid April they start and. Uh, Later April is the best time into early May and yeah. and um, early bite. That's the ticket. That was the, the key thing is you got to be out there early. I mean, you got to be breaking the inlet before daybreak uh, to, to, to have a really good shot at uh, on getting on those surfacing fish. Yeah, I mean, we left there about 8:30 and we stopped about five or six times, and then at seventh or eighth stop, we hit some flounder. I mean, not a flounder. We stayed there maybe 40 minutes tops and. We got seven keepers and lost a big one and threw a few smaller ones back. Do something back. Just be sure to keep uh, you know keep some bucktails on the boat. We're using ounce and a half to two ounce bucktails. We're tipping with Berkeley Gulf shrimp, four inch shrimp. And uh, when those bonita shut down on you, you know uh, you can deep troll, you know troll deep divers like we tried. And uh, if it doesn't happen, switch over, get on some live bottoms and work the bottoms for those keeper sea bass and flounder. So it was an enjoyable day, definitely today. Oh, yeah. so, we thank you all Fun for day. tuning in today and. Uh, and all we can say is stay tuned for the rest of 2010 season. It's looking like a good one already, folks. All right, folks, we got our Atlantic Bonita right here. We're basically just going to outline the fish right on the edge, just break his skin. And his backbone doesn't protrude way out, so we can really just slide that knife right down his body. Let's keep it tight to the backbone. And from that, it's all really how you want to stake them out. Mike and I like to take that center bone out, but uh, that belly meat's got to come off. That center bone out. One strip there and I'll sear mine right on the grill. Just one minute on each side. I want it rare. That's Just it. like you'd cook yellowfin tuna. It is. We've got two nice loins right there. Do that to both sides of our bonita. Very good eating. I'm going to start out scaling him. I like to leave the skin on, kind of hold that meat together. I like to take and cut straight, straight through him. Then I'll start at the belly, stick the knife in, and find that backbone. Once I get to find the backbone, I run it all the way in there, as hard as I can, and take it out to the outside. Just like that. Once you do that, you just lift it up, go over top the backbone, and go ahead and flay off the other side. Run right down it. Turn around. Now all you get, now I'm going to do is just go ahead and continue to cut it right off, and that's it. Flip it over. Do the other side the same exact way. Once you have that flay off there, you cut the belly bones out, and uh, you have a boneless flay. On these sea bass, they're real simple. I uh, I don't worry about scaling them. I just go ahead and cut right straight to the backbone, find it. Cut right down the backbone, following them bones. Cut to the edge, flip it over, follow the skin right out. Lay that meat right off that skin. Then you just cut your rib cage out. There's another skinless, boneless fillet. All that is excellent eating. I just can't <laughs> tell you how good it is.